The Play's The Thing. With your host, Judy Sleed. Special guest, Anthony Lombardo. Underwritten by Windmill Village, Gurney's Inn, and Paul Brennan. Now here's Judy, Judy, Judy. Oh, hello, hello <laughs> to the place, the thing, another uh, episode of our story here. <laughs> and I have Anthony Lombardi here, who I noticed that uh, on the credits they didn't give you, give you you're a painter or an artist, a photographer. I see you have a lot of beautiful pictures here for us to see. Yeah, I brought some new work that I'm working on and a couple of old pieces so you could see what, uh, people could see some things that have been exhibited recently and some work that hasn't been exhibited yet. You exhibit things around here in the Hamptons? I do. Uh, wherever I can find space, uh, there's a lot of alternative spaces here. I had an exhibit earlier this year at the Hampton Coffee Place in uh, Watermill. And now I have one currently up in their sh uh, Shelter Island shop. And I have an exhibit up now at the uh, Bank of New York in Hampton Bays. I and that see. exhibit will be up till Friday. And there's a, uh, actually be up till Monday, but there's reception Friday evening from 3 to 5. And that's sponsored by a gallery in Hampton Bays called the uh, Artisan Gallery. I see that you're, uh, I hear that you're very busy with it. You make sure that it gets around, everybody could see it. I do, I, I work really hard at trying to get as much outlet for it as I can to get as, as much exposure as I can to the work. Um, I love it out here and I love the, the light, I love the vistas, the views, the, the, everything about it and I just want to share that with people. And how long have you been doing this? Um, the current work I've been doing, I started about two years ago. I've been doing photography, though, for over 30 years. I started out as a teenager. Uh, my first excitement was I went to the Empire State Building on a class trip in third grade, and I took every, I have my little brownie camera, I took every picture in about two minutes, just <laughs> running around taking pictures, and I just fell in love with looking through a viewfinder then, and I've still been doing it. So did you uh, take photography as a hobby or did it develop into, you didn't do it as an art in, from the beginning, did you? Um, I, I started out uh, doing it as a hobby. Then mm -hmm. um, in my late teens, early 20s, I started doing it as a profession. And I worked my way up from uh, doing odds and ends in photo studios all the way up to having my own business. And I had my own studio for a number of years and I did advertising and editorial work in New York City and, and Nassau County. Um, I, in the 80s, I did some exhibiting. I used to do a lot of figure studies then. And I exhibited in New York, uh, Long Island, and in San Francisco. Did you ever take uh, pictures of uh, people? Um, not in the sense that you're thinking. I used to do, mm -hmm. I used to work for the medical examiner. Uh -huh. And I used to take a lot of pictures that were evidence for criminal cases. <laughs> not pleasant. So I would, nobody would go to you, I'll take my wedding picture or come or my birthday or my the, sweet 16. The first job I had was, was in a wedding studio. And I used to help out in the dark room and then I would actually go out and help out on the jobs and I started shooting my own weddings. And then shortly after that I worked in a portrait studio and we used to do uh, baby portraits and children's portraits. Oh. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I imagine. It was yeah. very popular too. Yes, that was back in, that was a long time. That was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, I went to art school for a short while. Can I'd like to see uh, your work. Can we see? Sure. Start with one. Um, we'll start with this. This is some work I've been doing, which is kind of new and a lot of fun. I've been finding some objects on the um, shore, and I've been just putting them directly on my scanner, and they've been. Um, and they're making what? a print of it. This is a shark's tooth. A shark's tooth. Did yeah, you down. actually look into the shark's mouth? No, this was on the sand and it's, <laughs> it's all black because it's been sitting there for a long time. Oh. <laughs> but that was a, a it's one project I'm working on. Okay. I can show you another one if you like. Oh, I'd love to see more. And this is a starfish. I found on the beach uh, out at Montauk. 
Was it alive when you? No, it was washed up and, and dead when I found it. Oh, it looks alive to me. <laughs> it looks pretty good. <laughs> and this is the underside of it. And all these objects are pretty small. They're all about, oh, I'd, I'd say maybe only an inch or two long, a couple inches long. So they're all kind of blown up. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, seahorse I found when I was, uh, I was, found this about 25 years ago wow. on the beach. I was helping my brother set up a uh, bird study and setting up birdhouses. And we looked down at one of the things and found this seahorse. And I've just had it for these years. I just think it's a kind of a gorgeous thing. And you had this for several, and it did I've had it for 25 years, yeah. How did you preserve it? I just, the way it is, I've just left it. It's always been on my dresser. And it didn't disintegrate, no. it didn't get moldy? No, I, I guess I'm lucky. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> With all the hum humidity around here. I know. What could that be? This is what they call a mermaid's purse. A mermaid's purse. And this is the egg casing for a skate or a stingray. And they, they make these egg casings and the little animal lives in there until it's ready to hatch. Then it breaks its way out. Then these, these wash up along the shore after they break out. How, how did you find this? Oh, they're, they're plentiful on our beaches. If you walk on our beach after a storm, you'll find, find them all over the place. I guess you have to know what you're looking for. I guess so. I guess so. I've never heard of this. Never. I wonder how many people who are watching would know would ever see well, this before. We've probably seen it, but we probably didn't know what it was. That's right. So what happens when you see this on the beach and you step on it? It you breaks. Hurt? No, it's it's pretty <laughs> soft. It crumbles apart. It is. Oh. It's like a, uh, it, it feels like it's made of almost like paper, like a stiff paper. Uh -huh. And then the last one in this series is this uh, Oh, I know shell. what that is. That's a shell. Yeah, it's a clam shell. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I love the way the, the colors in the shell come out. It has a, a luminosity that you get from just putting it on the scanner instead of letting a re light reflect that on an angle. Very interesting. Very nice. Very nice. You have a really nice collection. Thank you. And uh, this is what you're working on now. This is one of the projects. I'm working on two projects right now. There's this one. And I just found a broken shell yesterday that I've been playing with on my scanner today. And that will be pretty exciting when that one comes done. Um, I, I love it. It's just this project just kind of evolved naturally. Uh, just one day I was waiting for something, my computer to do something. And I said, well, what happens if I put this seahorse on the scanner? And I liked what happened. And then I started finding shells and different things and collecting them. And after while having them, I found the ones that were most interesting to me, and I started playing with them. So that's like one project that you're right. doing. Yeah, that's like a side project, a little fun. And uh, I have no really date yet for an exhibit for that. I have it shown a couple of these in a, in a, in a group exhibit. But I'm working more to get a bigger group. And I'm going to let that grow on its own, let that evolve naturally as, as And as these are something that you did this is a in project the past? That, uh, this is a project that I started working on about a year ago. And it's, I'm starting to spend more time on this. Um, I happen to love all the old barns out here. And oh. This is, this is one of them here. <laughs> and I've been That looks going, familiar. Yeah, everybody says that. This is a, a barn in Watermill. And it's the backside that you really can't see from the street. So I had to mm -hmm. go on the people's property in the winter and take this picture. Um, and I was feeling like it was a, a beautiful day. It was one of those clear, crisp days in, I think, March or February. And I wanted something big. So I, I came up to this picture, and I got it from a lower camera angle and shot up at it. And I, I this think picture. I had another artist before who had this picture taken, but I could be mistaken. That might he, be. He loves barns also. <laughs> OK. Right now, this is in the exhibit that I was talking about at the Bank of New York. And in that exhibit, it's a 40 by 50 inch print. So it's big, it's exciting, and it's a okay. lot of fun. And this is actually the same barn from a different view. This is seeing the barn 
from what this is the view people see from the street. A lot of people call this the Gucci barn because it's hard to tell here, but the bottom is red with the green stripe, sort of like the Gucci colors. Uh -huh. It also, um, it's, a, it's a Corworth barn. It's, they store their hay in there when they make hay. And it's probably one of the most popular painted barns out here. Every, you know, every art exhibit you go, you always see someone has, has a painting of this barn. <laughs> it's just, it's a, very, it's, a, it's a very visually appealing barn. Yes. And this is a, a barn. My wife and I all co call this the wavy barn because the roof of it has, on the shed on the barn, has such a wavy tendency to it. Uh, this is also in Watermill. And this one's not going to be here much longer. Actually, the side where the tree is fell down. And on the down. roof? Yeah. The, well, no, the, the tree is there. The, the, the barn fell down. <laughs> so the barn is kind of on an angle now, tilting uh. down. And I just see there's a for sale sign on it. So it's probably going to disappear very shortly. Well, it's a good thing you got it before. Yeah. You got the picture. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I've been doing a lot of photography of the barns is because a lot of them are going to disappear. There, there's a lot of these properties are being broken up and divided up, and these structures are they're unique and they're uh, important to the farmers, but they're really not architectural masterpieces. They're just utilitarian buildings, so they don't have a, a long lifespan. It's, 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 it's a, a historic yeah, house. Yeah, but it's part of history. It is. It is. I would hate to see everything go. I know. I know. That's one of the reasons I started photographing them. Uh, I noticed where we lived, it was, it's all open farm fields, and then one of the farms got broken up, and now there's just row after row of houses out there. And you just see it everywhere you go. You see less and less of the farm fields, and the vistas are getting smaller. So I've been trying to capture these. This is a... Uh, it was a, as a garage or a shed, and there was a house next to this, kind of next to it and behind it. They actually moved the house. They it, did. Yeah, this is, I, I believe it's Adam Halsey. He uh, has a farm over on Deerfield Road, and they wanted to keep the, the house in the family, and he wanted to move into it with his family, but they didn't like the location. So they picked it up and they moved it to the other end of the farm field, but they left the shed. <laughs> It is amazing what people can do. Move a whole house I know. someplace else. It's amazing, yes. isn't it? It is. Well, this is very nice that you. Now this is. You take these pictures so we could still remember it. Yeah. Well, that's part of the fun of it. Is getting this. Oh, that's this another is, barn. These these are, are two sheds. Um, this is an, another Halsey farm. Uh, and I they, guess it tells us what the Halseys used to do. <laughs> and they still do. <laughs> they, um, I was talking with one of them, and they were saying, actually, they're going to take these two apart because they don't have a use for them anymore. And they've got really nice old timbers that they want to use for something else. So they're going to take them apart and store the wood until they can use it for something else. So they kind of recycle them, which mm -hmm. is nice. But this was a real foggy day, and it was thick fog, and I, I just felt that was a perfect time to get to this place to take these pictures. Yeah, it is very nice. I like the effect. Yeah. And we have another one. It's different. Of that close-up of one of those barns there, or sheds. And That's a real close-up. Yeah. And I wanted to take it close to the, uh, the borders, very close to the edge, because I wanted you to see, how, see and feel how slanted it is. And, make you feel a little uncomfortable or whatever. Uncomfortable? Well, because the barn is so close to the edge of the frame. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Not uncomfortable in a bad way. No, it is very nice, very nice. And, and this is, uh, those were old barns, but this is kind of a new structure, fairly new compared to those. And this is the oh, greenhouses huh. they have over there. And uh, it's, they, they grow, they, they market flowers there and herbs and all kinds of plants there. It's very different from the barn. It's very different. It's before and after. Yeah. You know, we, we look out there and we see these old structures and we think mm -hmm. how romantic it is. Now they're building all these yeah. aluminum and metal barns and, and structures and sheds. And I, I wonder, you know, 50 years from now, 70 years from now, how that's going to change to the type of structures they're going to have. And are people going to look back and say, oh, wow, look at that old steel barn or something like that. But well, we'll it's so much more picturesque the, uh, what they had years ago than this steel thing. It is. It may be more uh, useful 
and you know it's easier to build sure. it but it's so much nicer it's the, true. the wood it, it is. is true mm -hmm. but the, like I said you know they, they try to recycle it and they, they they'll take them apart and use the wood the lumber for something else actually the uh, the one I was saying they're going to take apart it's the uncle he's the uncle of the one that moved the house so he offered him some of the wood from the house from the barns mm -hmm. for his house to see if he could use that and keep it did keep you ever uh, think of uh, putting all this in a book um, not at this point, but maybe in the future that would be just something that would be interesting to do. It would be, and especially in these old barns, yeah. it's going to be extinct, huh, pretty yeah. soon. They are. They are. I mean, who knows how long they're going to last. Some of them are like the one we call the wavy barn is going to fall down. It's falling down on its own. And some of these others are going to be taken down for development, and some of them are just going to use it, lose their usefulness and be taken apart. So I was going to ask you when you were uh, talking about photography from the very beginning, how is it different to photograph something like this from a, a portrait? The, the difference is not really a lot because when you're photographing a portrait, if I was to photograph your portrait, I would try to get the essence of you. Who, who is Judy? What is she all about? And all that kind of thing. Have that come through in the photograph. And I'm doing the same thing with these structures trying to find out what the structure is about. What's the essence of it? What's the feeling you get when you look at that, that structure? So it, it's not much different, actually. They're a little easier because they don't move around as much. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> so if you would uh, try to get you know, the real me, then I would have to sit like, for a very long time until you find the right expression that you're looking for. Well, we would do what we're doing now, except I would have a, camera, a tripod and a camera in front of me. Mm -hmm. We would have the lights all set up, and I would be sitting there engaging you in a conversation and waiting for the moments where you, expressions that you look the most comfortable or, or the most excited, or even sometimes uncomfortable, depending on you know, what happens during the conversation. And uh, what, this is not just one shot. You, you take several, don't you? Um, the way I work is, is not totally unique, but a little unique to a lot of other photographers. I pretty much know exactly where I'm going to set my tripod down when I go to take a picture because I've thought about it for a long time. I'll pass a lot of these things in my daily routine and I'll look at them and I'll say, gee, this is going to make a great picture. This is a great structure. And then when the day is right, the weather's right, the light is right, I'll go over and I'll take the picture. And I already have thought it out. I already know how I want it to look. So I'll go out there to do that. It's amazing. So you don't have to take several pictures, just that one. Yeah, I maybe take two, maybe one or two. Maybe when I get there and start taking it, I'll see something more unique about the, the picture, the structure that I didn't see driving by or, or walking by, and then I'll, I'll take another couple pictures. But usually I have a, it's usually the one that I've thought about is the one that comes out the best. Well, it's, a, you know, I just thought of the, I had my picture taken once and uh, that went on the back of a book and so they took several pictures and I had to choose which one was the best so you cannot do that with a barn you can't ask hey, which, which, which picture you like best I, I probably could I don't think I'd get an answer uh, if I get an answer I'll be in trouble yes oh, so it is different they don't talk back to you they don't talk back to you no yes well that's what used to make working with children like I was telling years ago I did children's portraits that used to be what the fun was was the interaction with the children because mm -hmm. they would get there and, and most of the kids I worked with were very young so they weren't as inhibited by strangers and the camera and the lights and they weren't trying to portray themselves as something else and they would just be themselves and they were a lot of fun and they look all natural yes yes we so where are you Definitely. from, Anthony? Uh, I grew up on Long Island. I grew up in a town called Rockville Center in Nassau oh County. Oh my gosh. Nab I, I lived in Baldwin like for 20 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. whereabouts in Rockville Center? Um, on Locust Street by Malloy College. Yeah, how long did you live there? Uh, I lived there for about 30 years. Wow. Yeah, so yeah I grew up you... there, then I lived there after I, I moved out and then came back. When did you leave? There. I left there in 93. 93. So you were there in the 70s. Yes. 
that's when I was in Baldwin. I in was the there in 70s. the 60s and 70s. And yeah. Left for a little while and came back. Isn't that funny? We probably ran into each other <laughs> a few times. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it's That's a wonderful a nice area. area. Very it's a nice. wonderful area. I'm happy that I grew up there. I had a great childhood. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say about it. It was just a wonderful place. We and had such fun. And you went to school there, right? I went to school in Rockville Center, Southside High School. Mm -hmm. I played sports there. I did very well in sports. Uh, then I went away to college. I went to Merchant Marine Academy at Kings Point the first time. I studied engineering for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and I played sports there. I left. What did you play? I played football and I ran track. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of fun with that. I did very well. Then I left college. I uh, didn't know what to do with myself. Took, did a few odd jobs and then I started working in photography. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it ever since. Uh, I was married and uh, my father-in-law was a photographer. He had his studio in Woodhaven. Okay. That was many years ago, and uh, he, I saw a lot of his equipment, but of course when I, <coughs> when I met him, he was no longer doing it, the business, but uh, he sold everything. But all these uh, photographs and the way he was taking pictures, and he, as a matter of fact, he took a pic first picture of my daughter. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And the wedding picture and all that. Oh, nice. Yes, very nice. And he loved to do that. He took very nice It is. It's, it's very exciting. I don't take pictures of people now, though, because I feel like I'm a voyeur when I'm taking pictures. I, I have the camera in front of my face, and I don't feel involved. Mm -hmm. So now when I'm with people, I'd rather be involved with the people, and I'll leave the camera mm -hmm. aside. So uh, you said you went to... You started taking lessons after you were already taking pictures. Yes, well, I started taking pictures as, a, as a young, in third grade, as I said earlier. Um, no, I meant you went to class, you went to study. Right, I went after. to art school. I went to the, the San Francisco mm -hmm. Art Institute in uh, 1980, 79, but 80. But you took pictures before I, that. I took pictures. I was doing portraits and weddings and that kind of work So what beforehand. did you think you were going to gain by taking a class? Um, I, felt study, I, need, I felt I needed to study art more. I had the technical expertise and I knew how to take a basic portrait, but I wanted to be able to get a little more. I wanted to be able to, to get that essence of, of, of a feeling that I'm feeling across to other people. Uh -huh, so and that's And I went to art school. Uh, I did that for a year. Then I ran out of money and someone offered me a job in New York, so I came back to New York and worked for been working at advertising studios, then I opened my own studio for a while. And I did advertising. So it paid off? Work. It paid off. Did somebody advise you to take a class or? Uh, no, I, I became aware of, of photography as an art form at that point. Uh -huh. And I wanted to know more about it. And I picked the school because of its heritage and the other photographers that had taught there and were teaching there. The art, the, the photo department there was started by Ansel Adams and Minor White, who were two famous art photographers. And one of mm -hmm. my teachers there was a na man named Perkle Jones, who was uh, Ansel Adams' first professional assistant, the first person to work for him, one of his students. And mm -hmm. I studied with him for a year and learned, learned a great deal about photography and had the opportunity to meet a lot of famous fi fine art photographers. I met uh, Cole Weston, Edward Weston's son, I met uh, Paul Capanegro, I met Ansel Adams, and a, a couple other people that are mm -hmm. less than now. That's very, I find it very interesting that after you've done this and then you went to school, because I know uh, some people who are acting and they, they say, well, I don't need to go to school, I already know how. Yeah. <laughs> And just by like doing it, they figured they're going to learn more. So the fact that you went to school, that, that's, that says a lot about you. Oh, that thank you. you. Well, I felt that there was things I needed to know that, that I wasn't learning mm -hmm. at the time, and I felt that was a place to get it. So now that you live here in Watermill, right? right? Yes, we moved to Watermill two and a half years ago from Port Washington, oh. my wife and I. My uh, wife retired, and we came out here. And we love it. We, it was the best thing we ever did, and we're having fun. At that point, when we moved out here, we had, when I designed our house, we designed it with the idea of putting a, a dark room in the, in the 
in the cellar. So you built your own house. Yes. That's great. And is your wife an artist too? My wife is an excellent illustrator. She studied fashion illustration at FIT. She wow. worked at that for a while, then she worked mm. in the fashion industry. Um, raised her kids, and then she went and worked on a, for an internet company after that. So you're both artists. We are. Well, that's, we are. that's good, but you don't interfere with each other's work. No, we do completely <laughs> different things. She loves mm -hmm. to do figure illustrations, mm -hmm. and she does the life drawing classes and loves to draw the figure, and I'm out in the fields photographing barns and farm fields and shores and things like that. So we, we really don't conflict. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we help each other a lot. Well, that's good. What about your children? Are they uh, staying home with you or are they they're, older? We have their older children. And my, from my wife's first marriage, they're uh, 26 and 24. They both live and work in Manhattan. And neither mm -hmm. one of them is an artist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're very creative, but not in arts. They, they tend to use that creativity more towards the lines there. And as my stepson's mm -hmm. into the financial business. And my stepdaughter's in event planning. And so he could count everybody's money in he the counts family. It, yeah, he's, hopefully he'll make <laughs> us all rich. We'll see. Well, it was very, very nice chatting with you. Oh, wonderful. And uh, I wish you a lot of success well, with your you. paintings. They are the photography, excuse me. That's right. Well, and it's nice to be called <laughs> paintings. It means that they're more than just a photograph. And uh, I would like to thank uh, my underwriters, the uh, Windmill Village, and uh, Gurney Zinn and Paul Brenner and uh, all the crew and everybody don't forget to tune in to the play is the thing and uh, we are in Manhattan also so bye everybody bye, bye. Thank you. <laughs> see you next time <laughs> see you next time <laughs> so this half hour like you so fast. It does. You don't realize it's a funny website. It's over. I said, gee whiz. <laughs> we, <laughs> we fill the half hour with chatter. It is. It's amazing. And I have two other things that we can get to. Love God. It's all right. It's all right. I forgot, but you know what? I know the, you told me before. These but are the, the things that we're